So, not a good result in the local election for the Conservatives. 28% uh, um, poor showing and a mammoth number of seat losses. It's almost as though people were quite deliberately voting against Conservative candidates. Uh, now, it's not often uh, understood by people who haven't been involved inside party politics that actually the elections are organised quite lit differently between local, Euro, general elections and then finally the referendum which we had in 2016. It's quite difficult for smaller parties to stand in uh, local elections because it requires organisation in every single ward in the country and most small parties don't have that. Um, indeed the uh, participation rates in even amongst the major parties are not particularly high so I think it was only about 75% 70, of seats, wards that were available uh, that were being contested uh, were actually contended by the Labour Party. Um, about 97% uh, were available, were contended by the Tory party, which meant that quite frequently Tories ended up being elected without any contest. In spite of that, they lost 1,300 seats. They remained a dominant party in local authorities, um, particularly those which have smaller wards and uh, uh, smaller electorates, rural and so on. Um, but the Conservatives have the ability to organise in every single ward, so you would sort of expect that anyway. This was bad because it's a signal of where things can go for the Conservatives. It's bad also because now they face a European election in which they are part essentially of the right. And the right, across the EU, isn't interested in Brexit, well certainly not alone. They have many other interests and the key one probably is who is going to become the Commission President. Now it has been decided over the past few years that uh, uh, the party that is uh, secures the most MEPs, that is the, uh, uh, the group of individual national political parties representing a stream of current of, uh, of thought. Um, that has the single largest bloc inside the European Parliament will propose the um, Commission President to on, replace, on this case, Jean-Claude Juncker. And in the case of the Tories, that is a certain Manfred Weber, who is a Bavarian, uh, South Germany, representing the European People's Party, which is an allied group of the British Conservatives. He is a Christian Democrat, and therefore he, he is a Europhile. Now, um, Manfred's views are particularly intriguing, I think, on the question of foreign policy and defence now being determined by majority vote. So what we have in essence in Brussels is the development of a, a, a nation, a supranational state, with its own foreign policy and defence force, with a, a majority vote control potentially, um, which could allow it to be deployed uh, essentially by a majority, rather than unanimity, a majority of the countries that are participants within the EU Council. Um, this was an original dream of Adenauer, who was one of the founders of the European Union. Um, and it, if we were to retain our membership of the European Union, even indirectly through uh, things like uh, tight agreements through the um, uh, uh, Customs Union and the defence-related policies that are being signed up to under the withdrawal agreements at the same time, um, the Britain might well be involved in making deployments uh, alongside European Union forces and it's not inconceivable they would be badged and accountable to the European Union and accountable back to European Union commanders. Um, the idea that those are under majority vote at the EU Commission, at the EU C Council, um, strikes me as really dangerous, um, particularly if we have uh, um, uh, interventions uh, in places like Turkey and Syria uh, and on the uh, border between uh, Eastern European 
uh, Union member states and uh, the uh, Russian state. Um, so this is Manfred Weber's agenda. And if there were a large number of Conservatives, I suspect they would end up voting as members of the European Parliament for Manfred Weber rather than his uh, social, uh, Socialist Party, SPD, S uh, Socialist Party uh, alternative, the candidate from Holland, a certain Franz Timmerman. Um, that is perhaps the hidden story of the withdrawal agreement and the customs union that the two major established parties here in the UK would like to sign us up to. What they are doing is agreeing, probably indefinitely, that we will participate in things like common defence procurement, common operations, and in due course, a common European army. Something that has long been on the agenda of the Europhiles as they create their superstate.